happy Facebook Live time. My name is Melissa Kerman and I am with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse and uh, welcome to Treehouse TV, <laughs> another episode. I've got a jam-packed agenda for you today. I've got some old, old products I'm going to be using, new products I'm going to be using, and then I'm doing something I've never done before, um, which is a literal walkthrough um, around my space to uh, show you my latest amazing product shares. Um, so I'm going to be showing you a ton of products um, and those I will be showing at the end. So we're going to start with some general announcements and then I'm going to dive into projects. I actually have four projects to show you. Um, some I'll of course be speeding through um, and I've done some of the parts and pieces as I always do. Uh, and the first project I'm going to show is a Christmas and then the other three are something brand new from the January to June mini catalog. So um, Let's go ahead and get started. I see people joining in. Welcome, welcome everybody. I missed all kinds of names passing by. <laughs> hi Sharon, hi MJ, <laughs> um, hi Debbie, yay. So glad to see you all joining in. Hi Megan. So um, just for, for announcements, lots of stuff going on. You guys know that the retiring um, list came out this week for um, uh, the August to December mini catalog. A uh, huge long list of things that are retiring and many of them are on discount up to 50% off. Um, check those out. Those are while supplies last so you'll want to get what you're interested in sooner rather than later. Um, make sure you don't miss out. There's also been a clearance rack refresh which means there's tons of new things on the um, clearance rack and those are even more deeply discounted, crazy deep discounts. There's blends alcohol markers for $1.80. <laughs> They're usually $4.50 so that's pretty amazing. Anyway, um, tons of great stuff, so definitely check that out. And if you order, make sure to use the hostess code if your order is under 150, just because uh, then you will get perks from me. And if your order is 150, you'll get perks from Stampin' Up! and from me. So um, I'm also doing something new this month um, in honor of it being December. And uh, I'm going to be giving up to either free card kits or up to four free gifts um, for orders in December. So um, that information was in my newsletter yesterday. So if you're curious about that, just uh, hopefully you've, you'll subscribe or you've subscribed or you're a newsletter subscriber already. <laughs> or let me know if you have questions. Or place an order and be surprised and find out. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so what else? Um, the January to June mini catalogs. Mine are arriving tomorrow. I think I ordered 14 boxes or 14 packs of eight. So lots of catalogs coming, both of the Celebration brochure and the January June mini catalog. I will be preparing those as quickly as I possibly can, putting labels on them, stuffing them with a letter and some other information and getting those out to customers who uh, are regular purchasers, purchasers with me. So if you've purchased within the last six months, you will definitely get a catalog and I kind of go past the six month period. But if you're not sure whether you're eligible to get an automatic catalog mailed to you, um, let me know that you're interested in getting a catalog. And if your intention is to purchase through me, I'm happy to mail you a catalog. Um, and of course, a celebration brochure. So uh, just let me know. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, so you guys have been talking about the Maker's Mojo Creative Escape that's coming in January. It's not till the end of January, January 30th, but there is a, an early bird special deadline. So we'll be doing a special drawing for anybody who registers before December, well by December 14th I should say, and we'll be giving away some product from the new mini catalog. So don't miss out if it's something you're interested in. There's going to be tons of creative presentations, me and two other demonstrator friends, and um, We'll have prize drawings and there's going to be a technique based creative play activity that I am planning. Um, so it should be a lot of fun. All the details are on my website. If you look under the classes and events tab, you'll see it um, right on there as one of the options. All right, what else? Um, of course, my taste of sweet product shares. Yay! The information is finally out. Um, I shouldn't say finally, it's early in December, right? Um, but it's on my website, also a tab for product shares. You'll see a tab specifically for the January to June um, mini catalog shares. There are photographs of the packaged up shares on there and all the details of what the price of each one is. If you're not familiar with my Taste of product, Sweet product shares, definitely want to stay till the end because I'm going to be showing you the contents of every single one of them. But I've got it all laid out, so it's going to be Amazing. I've never done this before, but I literally have all my tables covered with these amazing products laid out so you can really see what's in them and you can check out all the products whether you're interested in product shares or not. <laughs> so it should be a lot of fun. That's going to come at the end. 
Um, and uh, basically, it, each share has a, a little bit of each of the consumables that are easily dividable um, in the mini catalog. Plus, I have one other share that features um, project kits. So it's half of the two kits. So really quick, easy ways to design cards. You will need to provide your own stamps, of course, for those. But um, you'll get to see those more later. All right. So let's see what else. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for my announcements. I'm going to face the camera down and we will get started with the project demonstration. And when I turn the camera, you're going to see the tables kind of set up. It looks really pretty, actually. Uh, you can't really see it until I turn the, the camera. Here we go. So, sneak peek. <laughs> Everything's laid out. It was, uh, took a little bit of time to get it all laid out and looking pretty on the tables and set up in a way that I could walk around and actually... Um, you know, with one hand show you stuff and the other hand hold the camera. So it should be an interesting proposition as I go through and show you those later. All right, so the first project, like I said, is Christmas. We're gonna be using the Tis the Season Designer Series paper for that project. Um, this is in the August to December mini catalog. We're also using the Perfectly Plaid stamp set. And I may, I, I may be using a sentiment from In the Pines. I'm still, jury's still out. You're gonna to have to tell me what you think whether you think I should or shouldn't. Now, Perfectly Plaid carried over from last year, and I just love this set. I'm so glad it carried over and definitely getting more use of it. And we'll also be using these gold glitter enamel dots. So um, the In the Pines uh, bundle, I am so sad to say, is actually retiring the individual items as well as the bundle. The um, pine wood, these dies are actually 30% off. So if you're interested in these products, which I just can't believe they're actually going away because I was in love with these when they first came out and I haven't nearly played enough with them. But anyway, what can you do, right? So um, this is 30% off. So if you decide you want them, don't buy it as a bundle. Buy them as individual products because with this at 30% off, it'll be less than if you bought it as a bundle. So just word to the wise on that. All right. So the project I'm doing today is, uh, it's called a, well, actually, before I move on, I have to show you these things. So these are a few things that I've made with the In the Pines bundle. Um, did this with my team. It's a pop-up gift card holder with a little note card inside to pull up and write a note on there, but you would put a gift card on the inside. But I just love how this turned out. Actually, that's, got to take that out so I can close it easily. You can see my little scene that I've created on the front and all of my wonderful red gems. Anyway, just had to show off those products because they're going away. It's like I have to, you know, mourn and say goodbye <laughs> when things go away. All right, so the project for today. So this is a book, um, book binding style card. So it's a four and a quarter by 11. And then this one is scored at five and a half to make your half mark. And then at six and three quarters, which gives you a, a one and a quarter inch section here for your binding. So it's a really easy little construction and I, I actually shared this card, this style of card in my Color Fusers blog hop post on last Monday, I think it was. Actually this Monday, that's just a few days ago. It seems like longer. Um, so you can check that one out too. That one is made with the, um, what is it called? Circle Celebration is a new stamp set from the mini catalog. So we're starting with this and this is how this goes. Got all my pieces ready to go so I can make this super fast. So I've used some of my velvet um, paper. This is actually carrying over. Oh, I forgot to talk about this. So let me just talk about this for a second. So there are two lists out right now. One of them is the retiring items list and the other is the carryover list. But the carryover list is actually divided into two categories. So as you can see, I've cut out the center. I only did that because I didn't want to waste the center of my velvet paper. So I have that now die cut for another purpose. And then I've got my piece of designer paper from the Tis the T Season set. So that's just going to get over the top. Anyway, so the carryover list is divided into two categories. One is the things that are going into the annual catalog. And those items will actually be available um, on January 5th after the mini catalog goes away. But the other category are items that are carrying over and will show up in the July to December mini catalog. And on January 5th, those items will no longer be available until we get to July. So just word to the wise, if um, 
you check out that list, that's what that means. Uh, the category in the right describes when it's carrying over, you know, what it's carrying over into, shall we say. All right, so this is uh, dry embossed with the subtle embossing folder, my very favorite one. And then I've punched out a tree using my tr pine tree punch. And uh, that's just going to go right here. Now, from a design standpoint, I just want to tell you that it was a, a scrap of a piece like this with a, with a tree punched out that was the whole inspiration for this card. <laughs> now, I really wanted to do a book binding card, so that was the other element that was my inspiration. But um, this little piece was, you know, kind of key. So now I have punched out a red velvet tree and put some dimensionals on the back. And that's just going to get popped up right in the opening. So I didn't really need the opening, although it means it sort of sits down a little bit lower. Um, and anyway, it just fits perfectly. Now I'm going to take a piece of that designer paper, put it along the strip. Now you might notice I actually scored wrong. Do you see there's an extra score line there? I tried to hide it, but, you know, I might as well, you know, fess up. <laughs> so I went over it to try to smooth it out. And then I realized, you know, I'm going to cover it with designer paper. It's never going to be visible. Nobody's going to even know. You might not even have noticed if I hadn't pointed it out. So now this, you know, this is what it would normally do, right? It would open like this, right? But I'm going to do something a little bit sneaky here, which I thought of kind of late in the game. And I thought was really kind of a cool idea. So instead of putting adhesive all over this, which I did on my last version, I'm going to put some glue dots along the side. You'll understand this in just a minute. I could use adhesive, but I think these glue dots are just a little bit taller, if you will, by the tiniest bit. And you'll understand why I want it taller in just one second. Okay, so I'm only doing it along the sides and then I'm going to close it up. Okay. Now I would put a piece of white in here. That's just going to be a four by four piece. Um, forgot to cut it, so that'll happen later. But now I have to show you what you can do. Pretend this is a gift card. It's actually a credit card. <laughs> but now I can actually take a gift card and tuck it right in there. Right? Isn't that cool? I think that's such a cute little idea. So you'd have your white here, you could write your little note, and then you could give this to somebody for Christmas. I just think that's a brilliant idea and just so easy how to use this little binding. So my little I'm so proud of myself note for today. <laughs> so now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some ribbon along this binding. Um, and I want to use two ribbons. Now, when you're messing with two ribbons at the same time, it can be sort of challenging um, because it wants to sort of fall, you know, fall apart. And I really want my gold twine to be sort of right there in the center of my shimmery satin red ribbon. So here's what I'm going to do. Well, first of all, I've put binder clips. I love binder clips. They come in handy for all kinds of things. So I've put a binder clip on each end, which kind of holds the gold twine where I want it to be. And then I'm going to pay, place that face down. And I'm going to put it where I want it on here. Gauge my spacing. And then I'm going to fold it over. And just pinch it at the end. Take another magic binder clip. And bind it at the ends just to make it that much easier to get it where I want it and have the ribbon where I need it. So now this part is a little bit tricky because you're tying it with the binder clips on there, but it's definitely easier than if you don't have the binder clips on as far as keeping the ribbon in place. So there we go. I can kind of get that in position. And at some point, I'm going to have to take off the binder clip, but it at least allows me to manipulate it more easily to get to this point. So let's see if I can get that in there without too much fuss. There we go. 
And then I can take these off, move it out of the way, and then trim those babies off. Oh, I need a scissors, hold on. <laughs> just a little far away. And then I'll just go ahead and trim them off. And then I can reposition it if I want to. And I might need to play with that a little bit. Train my tails, as I like to say. And you will end up with one of your gold on the top and one underneath. And there you go. Now, I have one more thing I'm gonna put on here. I'm not gonna take the time to do it, but I am gonna show you on my finished version what it looks like. So this is the one I completed earlier. So it's got a bunch of those lovely gold enamel dots to decorate the Christmas tree. And you know, your tree has to be decorated, right? Am I right? So there you go. <laughs> there are my two cards, two different designer paper patterns for the binding, the same basic idea. Now this one, of course, I sealed all the way up so I got no spot for my gift card, dang it. <laughs> but I got smart when I did this one, so I'm very happy with myself. So that is card number one. Now actually what I was gonna consider, and you guys can chime in if you wish, is using a sentiment, this is actually from the In the Pines set, down here on the bottom. I thought it might work on this one because I've got the white in the designer paper. I had contemplated this, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Does it, do they need sentiments or are they good just plain straight up? I'll let you ponder that for a second while I grab my other things and start showing you some other stuff. So the next card is the same layout, but I'm using the Garden Dandy stamp set and I'm also going to be using um, the, the, what is it called, gilded foiling, <laughs> um, which is in the new mini catalog. I'm super excited about this stuff. Done a bunch of different variations on using it. I should be looking at your comments. Okay, I don't know anybody. So um, those are p potential, the sentiment. Comment and let me know. Say yes, the sentiment, or no, the sentiment on the tree card. So for the Garden Dandy Suite, you'll be seeing the product share in just a little bit, but there's one product that I wanted to show you that I couldn't include in the shares, and this is kind of an opportunity to, um, uh, good without, okay, I see. Okay, cool, thank you for your in for input and feedback, everybody. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna have to look at those. Before I attach, I'll uh, make a, I'll commit to something. So these are the Dandy Laser Cut Paper, and um, I got them not being sure whether in fact they would work for the product share or not. But as you can see, you get you know one sheet like this and one like this, and each of the pieces are unique. So I can't easily divide it in half and have everybody get the same thing. This one has some multiples, but they're just beautiful, beautiful detailed shapes that you just punch out and you can use however you want on your projects. So I just wanted to take a second to show you those because I just think they're so pretty, really, really pretty. So those will be fun to play with when I get around to it. <laughs> okay, so on to the project. So I'm going to zoom through this because I've done some of the pieces already. And I've got, again, my card base scored in the same way as the other one was... And for this one, I've got a one and a quarter inch binding. So um, one of the other projects has a different size binding. So there we go with this. I'm just gonna fold that back, burnish it with my, let's see, where is my bone folder? I have my bone folder. And I have done a whole bunch of these pieces. So I'm just gonna quickly put them together. I've stamped my inside with my, um, what is it, the Dragonfly Garden stamp set. So I've got to show you that bundle. There's the stamp set. Here's the punch. And I've done cards using both of these today. So that's going to get sealed. And I think I'm going to give myself the option to make this a gift card holder too. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to put regular adhesive on those side sections. It should still be enough space to put a gift card in there. The inside's gonna have 
these two layers, Mossy Meadow and Whisper White, stamped off in Memento Black. Are they similar to the Forever Friend Gold ones? Well, I think the shapes are very different. I know that much. I have the, um, the gold ones as well, but of course they're all like fern leaves and stuff. So um, I'll have to take them out and check it out myself, see what we think. Okay, so the front of this card has a piece of the Dandy Garden um, designer paper, and that's gonna go here on the left. And then I've done assembly of my other layers. This is a very dramatic color scheme. I just really love it. The black and the gold. And we're getting to the fun now, the real fun. So I'm gonna stamp a focal piece for this. And that did not go on straight. That piece of designer paper, that is so off. <laughs> Can't possibly live with that. Gotta have an even edge. I think that's closer to correct. Okay. All right, so here's my focal piece. We're gonna get started with the gilded foiling now. So I've got my embossing buddy. I'm just gonna cover the whole thing. And I need my Versamark. And this image from the stamp set. I think this is my favorite image from the stamp set. So delicate and pretty. And I'm just going to ink it up. Stamp it in the left hand corner. Has anybody out there seen the gilded foiling yet? Have you seen it in action? Or is this a brand new thing for you? I'd be curious. And uh, if you have seen it, I'd love to know what you think. Try to keep an eye on the comments as, uh, as I demonstrate. Yes, it's definitely gonna be hard to decide. Um, and I am doing the shares, and I'm, I'm going to make life difficult for you when I show them because there's so many great designer papers, no question about it. Okay, so now I have to, like, get myself set up. So what I have here, and you can use the gilded foiling in several ways. I'm going to show you several ways tonight. Um, you can use it with heat and stick powder. This is the first example. I'm going to show you. The gilded foiling is in here. I'm going to show you how it's packaged when we go over and do the product share walkthrough. And I have to have everything ready to go. So I've got it in uh, this container with a lid. So I've undo undone, undid <laughs> the lid. And you can see it's very staticky. So it kind of, you have to be judicious in how you use it because it can like fly all over the place, which um, can be a little bit crazy. In fact, when Shelly and Sarah um, Douglas from Stampin' Up! demonstrated it at our recent onstage at home event, during their presentation, they spilled it on the floor. <laughs> and we didn't see it, but they described it, and I just thought, oh my gosh, that is a big mess. Not very fun at all. But uh, it was funny, and they made light of it. It was really sweet. Okay, so I've got that stamp with Versamark. I've got my gilded foiling. I've got my heat tool right here. And I'm going to have everything at the ready because I have to do this quickly. And that's half the challenge here, or the main challenge, I should say. So I'm going to just stick this into my heat and stick. This is probably the most cumbersome way to use the gilded foiling. So just beware. There's some easier ways to use it as well, which I'm going to show you. Make sure that's really covered. So heat and stick powder is literally a powdered glue. So just so you are aware. Let's see. Okay, so, and this is a tricky thing, right? Because when you have a heat tool like this, the, the old one used to have like a button, and this is a slide. So it's a little bit tricky to turn it off and move quickly. So you'll see how I do it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to heat it. Here we go. Make noise. So you can see it's going from white to clear, and I just need it to stay melty and hot. Like, so I'm going to use my left hand to turn it off quickly, lift that up, and literally plop it in. 
and press it down. Okay, so wherever that glue was, you can see how fast I moved. And this is just crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. <laughs> it's really fun. I love crazy, messy stuff like this. Okay, so check that out. What a mess. Hot mess, right? So I'm just going to, with my sponge, this is just a sixth of a sponge. We're just going to start rubbing it off. I'm going to get the bulk of it off. Now you might be asking, well, why use this versus gold embossing powder? There really is a big difference in the look. I don't have something side by side to show you, but I have a photograph that I will include in the blog post that I share for these projects. You can see any sort of air makes the flakes kind of want to fly. <laughs> so like you definitely don't want to blow on this thing. And if you blew with your heat tool on it, oh my goodness. <laughs> you would not be happy, whoever you would be cleaning up for days. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the inside of my lid and I'm just going to be a little bit more aggressive with rubbing off the excess. And by doing that, I'm I'm uh, revealing more of the details in the images. So you can see it's super shiny and pretty. So there's a close up view of it. Move that off to the side. Can you see how, how shiny it is? When you heat emboss with gold, it's, um, it's very. Um, uh, it's almost like a dusty matte finish almost. It's got a little bit of shine, but this has a ton of shine. It's so pretty in person. Um, and I'm sure that the camera is not doing it justice. But um, keeping it hot before you put it on is really important. So like I've got a spot or two where the gold didn't stick because it wasn't quite um, melty when I smashed it into the flakes. But, you know, by and large, it's pretty close to being what I want it to be. So... Now, you can't do a large area, right, at the same time with this, and that is because it won't stay hot and melty, right? So, by the magic of TV, I've done one that is finished. So I've done, actually, four different stampings. So I did this one just like I showed you, and then I did, well, I think I did three. So then I did these two where I, you know, melted the heat and stick and then smooshed it in, and then I did the butterfly. So that's my close to finished focal piece. And here's my card base. I'm just gonna go ahead and attach that on. And then I've got one other little element, which is I've punched out one of these tiny little dragonflies with using some gold foil. So I have a tiny little dragonfly to place into my little garden, my little goldy garden. And I just have glue dots right in the center, so I'm going to press in the center, lift up my little wings, and I'm almost done. So the last thing I'm going to do on this, and I actually want to do this part off camera, I will show you what, what the intent is. I'm going to use these two ribbons to tie around the binding like I did on the last one. And now I could also do this same technique stamping these dragonflies and that is what I did on this card. So this is the same layout. I just did the gilded foiling with my dragonflies in the heat and stick and I popped this up on dimensionals, this one on glue dots so they'd be sort of at different heights and can you see the adorable little ladybug in there? So cute, right? Yes, I think it's adorable. So for this, I just used a glue dot to attach it. It worked perfectly. And then, of course, I did the same trick with tying my um, twine around. And it's kind of subtle just because it's thin, but I like how it ties the gold in with the gold elements in the card and the um, foil paper in behind. So this one will get its ribbon after I am not live anymore, and I will show it on my website. Um, when the blog post goes live on Saturday. So here's another card that I made, and then I'm going to show you a few other things you can do with the gilded foiling. So this is actually my original design. <clears throat> 
So this is, um, I did this with my team. It's also a book binding style fun fold card. And the only difference is that this binding is only one inch. So I took a piece of five and a half by eight and a half, scored it at four and a quarter and five and a quarter. So the difference between those two is one inch versus one and a quarter inch for the, the long card. So just the spacing is however you want it to be. You could do it thinner, you could do it wider, um, any way that you want. So it's super fun. And I'm, I think I'm addicted to this layout. It's just too much fun. <laughs> so more ideas with the gilded foiling. I am going to set a few things aside and show you some other fun things. Let's see how we are on time. Oh boy. Okay, well, you know my, my tour is gonna actually be pretty quick because I've laid everything out. And those are my famous last words, but we'll see what I can do. All righty, so the next thing I wanna show is, let's see, okay, so I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock and a piece of our adhesive sheets. So for the gilded foiling, all you need is something sticky, right? So lots of ways to get stickiness. So I'm gonna start with removing my backings. Actually, let's see, yeah. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place this down on my cardstock. And I'm gonna do that for all these three pieces. And I want them to really be touching to the extent I can, because if there's a gap, then my, my foiling won't stick to it. So let's see if I can do this in a different way. I'm gonna pull that off and push it up against that edge and then pull this off. Okay, so now with this, I can do a, a couple of different things. Um, I could turn it over and die cut a shape. Now I would want to die cut from the top side because I want the glue to be on the good side, right? Because when I remove these, I'm going to have a sticky a stickiness underneath. If I can experiment with this and just see what I'm doing here. Okay, come off. <laughs> Yeah, so there's gonna be stickiness that is attached to the white when I remove this backing. So I could die cut a shape now, and I have tried it that way, and then I would press it into the foiling. So this is, this is what I did. Now, first, first of all, I did it backwards. So I, instead of, I die cut on the cardstock side, so the good side is actually on this side, not sticky and instead I did it the other way. So what I need to do is I need to take my die and press it down onto what would be the sticky side, die cut it, and then um, do my foiling. So by doing it th that way, however, you can see it's hard to get all the foiling off of these intricate shapes. You can see some of the gold on the sides, right? Sticking out. So I thought, why not do something different and take off these backings and cover the whole surface with the gilded foiling. So let's see if I can make that happen right here now. I'll show you one that's finished as well. So, taking off the backings. I was struggling with that before, so let's see if I can do that. Okay, so this is all sticky now that surface. I think I'm going to do a bunch of these, so I've got a nice big piece to play with. Now these backings I'm taking off are perfect for using the way I do when I have something already with adhesive on it, a little piece that I want to have something I can put on. This is all sticky, right? If I touch it, it's going to stick to me. So now guess what I'm doing? Let's just put it right into my gilded foiling. Woohoo! It's gonna be so pretty and so crazy messy. Oh no. <laughs>
Did you see that? Because I just like turned it over. It went boosh. Um, what did you say? Let's see. Yes, I could have burnished it the back down. I could have. You're right. Good suggestion. Let's see. Okay, so then I'm just going to press, you know, rub it off so that I get a nice smooth surface. Comes off pretty easily. Go along the edges. Okay, so I am actually going to show you one that's done. I got to stop like plopping it in there, right? Just the littlest bit and it goes flying. Okay, so I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to show you the one that I have done. I actually have one more thing to do with this. Okay, so here is one that I have. There's a sheet I did earlier. So it's just the whole sheet of gilded foiling so I can play with it as I want and where are the pieces I'm looking for around here? oh yeah so I just cut out a piece and then die cut it and it it turned out really nice smooth edges clean clean uh, clean edges I didn't have to worry about the gilded foiling you know coming off the side or anything like that or having to rub it or rub something that's delicate so it's really quite effective in my limited experience to make a full sheet and then cut out whatever shapes that you want. So I'm looking forward to playing with that more. Now I also, last week, shared these snowflakes, right, and I used the foam adhesive sheets. And when I was doing it, I actually put the adhesive on the wrong side. We actually put it on the top side, which is what I need for the gilded foiling. So I thought it would be really fun to just see how this little snowflake looks and again it's just a sticky surface and that's all we need to make the gilded foiling work so I'm just pulling off the backing you guys liking this oh yes the texture is gorgeous I so agree with you and if you look at that sheet I mean it's like it's like veins it's just like you know it doesn't even compare to gold foil which is very uniform and relatively speaking uninteresting this is just so pretty i am in love messy but i totally feel like it's worth it okay so this has sticky all over it and now all i have to do is put it face down and stick it into my foiling now this is going to be hard to get it off of i imagine but i might have to use my fingers a little bit that might take a little bit of effort there but I have to do it. I have to do it so I can show you guys, because I'm excited. Now I'm seeing that this one spot is not wanting to have, the gilded foiling is not wanting to stick, and it could be that I lost the stickiness in that spot. So I know a way to add stickiness back. What I would do is just take a little bit of our multi-purpose liquid glue, let it dry to get tacky like I've do on projects a lot of times, let it get tacky, and then stick it back into the gilded foiling. So I'm going to have to play with that a little bit, but get, get it out of the grooves. But you can see I think that's going to be so pretty when I clean it all up. So pretty. Fun, crazy, messy fun. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you have to have this like I had to have it? Like day one, I had to have it. Okay. Let's do one last thing. Okay, so in the, uh, what is it called? The um, art gallery, art gallery suite? I think that's what it's called. This embossing folder is in the art gallery suite. So I decided that I had to dry emboss this piece of black. Can you see the detail in there? It's kind of hard to see on camera, I think. But that's the shape that we're working with. So what I'm going to do here guess I'm going to use my Versamark. I'm going to do a little bit of kind of direct to paper, just swishing it over the surface. I like to do this for my tarnished foil technique, if you're familiar with that. And then I'm going to bring my heat and stick powder back in. And, you know, I don't really know exactly where I put the Versamark, but we're going to find out because the heat and stick powder is going to go wherever... I rubbed on the surface. 
Now I saw someone post a project somewhere online. I can't remember exactly where. Probably Pinterest, <laughs> one of my favorite places to look. Um, using the, it was the new embossing folder that co that goes with the Sand and Sea Suite. And it was just, she used the gilded foiling. She did something like what I'm doing where you're rubbing it on the surface. I'm just rubbing off some excess because it looks like too much to me. Um, and uh, it was just amazing looking, so pretty. Okay, so we're gonna see what this looks like too. I could play all night long. Okay, so we're gonna now bring the gilded foiling back in. And uh, see if I can get these little flecks back in my thingy. Yeah, see, they just kind of fly all over the place. All right, so I'm gonna melt and then smush. And so this is very like organic. Um, you know, we'll just see what happens. Experimenting live. And of course, this is kind of a big area, so some of it's probably not gonna stick, because it's not gonna stay hot, but you know, we'll just see. We'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna go over the whole thing. Turn it off quick. Smush it down. <laughs> I've got the other one in there still. And turn it around. Can't wait to see what this looks like. Crazy. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I got enough on there, but to bring out the detail. Something to play some more with, clearly. And I could have done like half at a time if I wanted to make sure that it showed up. And maybe that side is actually more texture, I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of cool. What do you guys think? It's subtle. Just fun, fun to play. <laughs> show you options, things to do. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing that gilded foiling um, and all the projects today. Um, where is my last one? Lay them all out there. So obviously, um, I think I'll just do a couple of my recap announcements and then for anybody who does not want to stick around for the product share tour, you can um, be on your merry way. So let's see, just a quick little recap. So don't forget to check out the retiring list and the clearance rack. Um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and face the camera towards me. No, wait a minute. Let's see if I, yes, I'm trying to do this so that it's not on top of me when I turn it around. Okay. All right, so. Um, yeah, don't forget to check out the clearance rack and the retiring items list on my website. There's actually a blog post just for it with visuals of all the products as well. Um, and make sure to check out the carryover list if there's anything that you just have to have that's going to be not available for the next six months from January to, to June. Um, and my Maker's Mojo event. Um, you only got four more days to register for the early bird special opportunity. So make sure to check that out. Again, that's on my website. And let me know if you want a catalog so I will know to mail one to you. Um, so all my these projects will be photographed and on my blog on Saturday. I'll post the video as well to YouTube so you'll be able to go there and see it. Um, and I will be back next Thursday. So. Um, same time, same channel. I think it's the 17th of December. Oh my gosh, getting so close to Christmas. I have so much more to do between now and Christmas. <laughs> I always crack up when people say, are you ready? It's like, nah, are we ever, ever ready? <laughs> Not ready. Anyway, I am going to now disconnect my camera and I'm going to start doing a little walk around. I'm going to show you the product shares. I'm super excited to do this. Um, and let's see if I going to have to disconnect my sound for a second. Like I said, this is like a 
first time kind of tour. Never actually done it this way before, so hopefully I'm not gonna make you dizzy showing you the products as I move around. So I am now gonna move and I'm gonna turn the camera facing to the cables. So I definitely want to hear your thoughts on each of the products. Um, now I need my little list so I can remember the names of all of these. <laughs> Let's see where to it go. It's over here. My menu. This is what I like to call it. This is my menu. Taste of a sweet product share menu. This is on my website. It's two-sided. So we're going to start with the Love You Always Sweet. And what you see right there is the actual assembled share. I always put photographs of the assembled shares on my website, but you know, it's hard to tell really what's inside. So that's what was sort of the genesis of the reason why I'm doing this little tour. So what's in this um, share is a six by 12 sheet of each of the foil papers. You can see them here. They're really gorgeous. The color scheme is Blushing Bride, Sahara Sand, and Rococo Rose. And then of course this lovely ribbon that's kind of double-sided, so one side is shimmery and the other is, well, shimmery and shimmery. Different shimmer. It's just super pretty ribbon. And then, let's see. Here we've got the specialty paper. Um, and if I keep my menu with me, I can even tell you the names of each of these things. Um, this is the Love You Always specialty paper in those same colors um, with the foiling shiny elements. I just think this is so pretty. And then these right here are actually little boxes, super easy to put together, and the little heart charms. Most of the times with the embellishments, you end up getting a half of a pack, um, or in some cases, it's a quarter, uh, depending on how it's most easily dividable. So now you get these little black, matte black dots, two different sizes, and then this is the little box. So I assembled it. It actually has the bottom that comes together without any adhesive at all, and then this top piece just slides over the top. So super easy to use to make. And then these papers are also part of the suite. And these, of course, you can color, which is going to be lots of fun. So I'm going to just go through each one of them because what you're getting in the share is a piece that's 6 by 12 of each of the six uh, patterns. And so I'm just going to turn them over one at a time so you can actually see them. So move that up there. Space is always a challenge, right? Okay, I love that one. So these are pretty neutral patterns to play with. And of course, this is the sort of Valentine's themed um, suite, but you can do all kinds of things with this, not just Valentine's. So that's it for the Love You Always suite. This is the biggest of the shares. It actually has um, seven products in it. And um, that's because there's all those different specialty papers. So um, there are no others that are that big. Okay, so here is the Hydrangea Hill Suite. This one right here. You can see the pearls inside. These gorgeous colors, pearls. I think there's four colors. One of them is hidden behind there, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, actually. Maybe it's three. No, it's three colors. And then this sheer ribbon. And then the mercury glass acetate is in two colors. Now I have it on a white backing just so that you can see it better. And I think it's Highland Heather and I'm not sure what the pink is. I forget. And then here is the designer paper. So this share has four products in it. So the acetate, the ribbon, the pearls, and the designer paper. This piece of designer paper, interesting, differently oriented, if you will. So I'll show you that. Beautiful hydrangeas. And then neutral patterns on the back. And yes, and the black and white, you know, you, you just got to color it if you don't like it black and white. <laughs> I love black and white myself, but I am inclined to coloring it for sure. So, there we go. 
so pretty. And in general, I got the, the showy patterns starting on the top and then the more neutral, simple patterns on the back. All right, moving right along, I'm gonna move over to my next table over here. Down at the end, we're gonna start with the Garden Dandy and I need to grab my menu. <laughs> help my memory remember all this stuff so the garden dandy suite there's the share right there that actually has uh, five items in it so it's one of the larger ones and I've shown the designer paper quite a bit I think a few weeks but I've got it kind of on display this is one of those that has you know 24 different patterns because you got the front side because it's six by six and then the back sides so lots of great neutral papers. Of course, those were the papers I used on one of my projects today, on the three projects actually. And then of course, there's memories and more cards, the four by six, some specialty cards, and then the three by four memory and more cards, all the little cute, adorable um, ladybugs and the cards and envelopes. And those are big cards and envelopes. So they work with um, the four by six memories and more cards. So supposed to be super easy, of course, to um, use those together to make quick cards. And then, of course, the Mossy Meadow braided linen trim, which we used on the projects today as well. So that is the Garden Dandy Suite and what's included in the share. Next up is the Fine Art Floral. So that's what the suite, the share looks like. It has five products in it, including the gilded foiling. Now, this is how it comes packaged in this bottle. Now, it looks full, doesn't it? <laughs> I emptied half of this bottle into the container you saw me use today. It basically explodes <laughs> when you take it out of the bottle. So the way I'm packaging it for the shares is actually in a plastic baggie. And if I were receiving this, what I would do is probably cut it open, put it in a container that you would use it in, and just get rid of the baggie. It's just a, a way to, um, to uh, send it to people easily. I'm trying to get the glare out of here. Okay, so you've got this lovely gold ribbon. I've also showed that in some of my Facebook Lives. Just love that ribbon. So elegant. And the acetate sheets, which trying to get the glare, which um, align with the, some of the designer papers. I think I showed that last week, but they're just super pretty. And you're gonna get a half a container of the heat and stick powder and a recycled um, embellishment container in a baggie so it won't uh, fall open <laughs> and be a, a mess. So, and the heat and stick powder goes a long way. So that'll last you for doing lots of projects. So let's take a look at the Fine Art Floral Designer Paper. This is definitely the showcase paper. I, it actually is like an oil painting that's been taken a photograph of. Just so pretty. Let's check these out one at a time. Love this one. Look at those great textures. I love that one too. I hope you guys aren't getting dizzy with me holding the camera this way. You have to give me your feedback. Let me know if you liked this tour. Uh, obviously, we're not done yet, but we're moving along. So there is the back sides of all those papers. And of course, you can see this textural paper is um, kind of like the, um, the emb embossing folder that we use, the, the dry embossing folder. Um, so that's part of this suite, and while it's not included in the product share, I do have the stamp set that coordinates and the floral gallery dies as well. Those are just back there so you can check them out. Oh yay, Marilyn, I'm glad you liked the tour. I'm so glad, thanks for letting me know. So now, this next one is, gotta go to the back side of my menu, the Sand and Sea Suite. And this has four products in it, and um, one of them is hidden. The one that's hidden in behind, this is part of why I'm doing this tour this way, um, is because the pearlescent paper is hidden in behind. So it's really, really pretty. 
um, paper. And the pack is, um, I think it's divided by four. So everybody gets a six by 12 piece to play with. And then you get stickers that are, you get 10 of each in the three different um, uh, shapes. I think this is a star fish in the background and then a shell and then another shell. So pretty. And then these are just gorgeous. These, what are they called? Opal rounds. So um, you're getting half a pack of that, two different sizes. And then the designer paper. Let's take a look. This is so pretty. Such a great texture in this paper. Just love it. I love this one too. The soft, soft colors. So pretty. I'm not even a beach person. <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh at me, but I totally think this is beautiful and could see playing with it. Love this paper. I want to make that paper. <laughs> Anybody else feel that way? Just adore it. Starfish. Another great textural one. And then this last but not least. And then that's kind of the showcase paper with the seashells. And this suite has an amazing bundle with uh, some dyes in it, this incredible dye and embossing folder. It's so pretty. Okay, moving right along. We're in the home stretch. Well, a little, we're more than halfway there anyway. So this next one is called the Ice Cream Corner Suite. So the share itself has three items in it. So the designer paper, I'm trying to get the glare off of there ribbon and the little sprinkles, candy sprinkles. And this Blackberry Bliss uh, striped sheer ribbon. And this is actually two, two and a half yards, which is what you get. You're getting a quarter roll of ribbon. Uh, in most cases, that's how it is when there's, there's 10 yards in it and I divide it into four. So the um, designer papers are typically divided by four. The ribbons are divided by four. A lot of the other things are divided by two, uh, just depending on, um, on what makes most sense. Okay, so back sides, moving to the front side. <laughs> I actually chose to, the neutral patterns to show you first on this one, but I love these colorful patterns on the front side, those ice cream cones and then these lovely organic shapes and colors, just adore that. Ice cream, what is that called? The popsicles. <laughs> I got that. I love that. I love those images, the popsicles. And of course, for this suite, there is a stamp set and coordinating punch. The punch is actually an ice cream cone shaped punch. And of course, ending on this gorgeous, beautiful ice cream cone paper is just so pretty. I just love it playful and fun. Okay, so moving along to the snail mail suite. And this paper is really fun. I have to tell you, when I was looking at this suite, my, my gut reaction was, nah. <laughs> and then I looked through, and of course, snails were the papers that were showing on the top. And then I found this mushroom one, and I just think that is so fun and playful. And this, of course, has just three products in it. Um, the twine is sort of a comb combination pack of ribbon, so it's considered one. And then, of course, there's the these lovely um, heart-shaped uh, dots, or whatever they're called. <laughs> it says it right on there. Resin Hearts Embellishments. They always have these names for them. And this twine, you're actually getting half of a roll. So I've actually, this is half, and then what you see in there is the other half. Seven and a half yards of each one of them. And then the papers. So let's take a look. These are sort of the subtle papers. There's my little favorite big mushrooms. And then these cute little snails. I love this paper too. It's kind of like a Valentine's paper, but um, could be used for all kinds of things. More adorable little mushrooms. Are snails associated with mushrooms, guys? <laughs> I mean, you know, is, what, what is that about? Some reason why the snails go with the mushrooms. Just curious. Thoughts to ponder. And those snails are, you know, they're pretty cute. Um, I kind of generally have an aversion to snails just because, you know, they get in the garden and they eat your stuff, you know. 
And then last but not least, those cute big snails. <laughs> big snails with big eyes. All right, so that's it for the snail mail suite. Two more to go. For this one, this one is the well-suited suite. That suite just has two items in it, just the designer series paper and the twine. And for this one, I actually rolled the twine on one roll. I actually have some extras of these rolls, but I'm not sure how many I have. So I decided why not roll it onto one. All right, so the paper. This is the boy suite, <laughs> or I should say the man suite. Hopefully nobody's offended by that comment. Um, and But there's also paisleys and pretty patterns that they don't have to be masculine, in fact. But this is definitely a great suite for masculine cards. This is more feminine, uh, probably my favorite designer paper in the, in the set for that reason. But the other patterns are really great, neutral, easy to use patterns. So of course this suite has a stamp set and dies that make these really cute men's, um, well, shirts, I guess, you know, with a tie and um, collar and anyways, just it's fun. Some of the things I've seen that people have made, it's just incredibly fun. So now you've seen all eight of the product shares that are suite based. Um, the idea being, of course, that all the products coordinate um, and Stampin' Up! does that for us, of course, um, to make it easy for us to design and create. Now, occasionally I add in uh, a different kind of share. Last time I did some embellishment shares, some for miscellaneous things that were in the catalog, because I thought, well, why not? People might be interested in those as well. So this time around, I decided to do project kits. I was really attracted to the Valentine's-like project kit. So this is one of the project kits. It comes when you buy it, the full pack. It's 16 cards. So in the share, you're going to get enough for eight. So you've got two each of the different design card bases and then all these lovely pieces and parts that you would of course have to stamp on you need to do need to provide your own stamps and there is a stamp set that coordinates with this but it's not included in the share because this is all about consumables and then of course envelopes to go with and the other kit that goes um, with this is half of the it is called sweet little valentine's cards and more and for this one, you're going to get five each um, of the envelopes, which come in different patterns. You can see there's little um, gold embossed dots or stripes. And then a variety of these little cards, card fronts, so they're kind of like memories and more cards, right, to make like a valentine. So they're small, but just adorable. And of course, each of these is double-sided, so you can use whichever side you want. And the way it's set up, of course, is that you're either going to get three of the stripes and two of the dots or three of the dots and two of the stripes. So that's just the way that this kit is um, designed. Um, so let's see. <laughs> I see your comment, Kimmy, about the slug, but I don't think I understand. I'm going to have to um, read it later and maybe ask you. She got the house and the divorce. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, anyway, we'll, we'll check back on that later. Maybe I have to ask you individually. So um, anyway, just fun, and I could just see writing a cute little card. These are going to be super easy to put together, um, these little valentines. So it's just a small section. So there we go. There is the finish of my, my little tour. And now I'm just going to turn me around, <laughs> say hello. So... Um, Definitely, I will be reading your comments. I'd love to know what you thought of the tour, whether you'd like me to do it again. Um, it was a ton of fun and time and effort <laughs> to lay everything out in such a way that I would be able to um, show you guys easily and quickly. And I uh, hope I didn't make you dizzy in the process, but um, usually when I show you projects or I mean products, um, just where the camera's facing down, it's like I end up with a tornado of everything everywhere. <laughs> because I can't effectively really show you. So laying it all out made it a lot easier for me to show it and hopefully a lot easier for you to see it. So um, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. I'll look forward to seeing the comments. So again, I'll be back same time, same channel next Thursday uh, the 17th with more fun projects. And uh, just uh, let me know if you have questions, comments. I can't wait to read what you have to say. I always enjoy that after the live when I can really pay attention to, uh, to your comments. 
So um, anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and I will look forward to seeing you next week. Um, and have a great evening. Have a great week. Um, love you. <laughs> Bye.